Good morning. Let us sing to the glory of God the song that is displayed. Friends, I'd like to start with a story. There was a preacher who went and spoke to people about the creation of God. He was talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, and the seas. There was one particular person who was very impressed about it, and he was happy that God made so many things so beautifully. But he had a small doubt. There are a lot of things that God made but did not match. He felt that God did not do it perfectly. Like you have the vast sea, but you cannot drink a bit from that. And you have a big tree with very small seeds. You have a watermelon born by a very twiny creeper. So he was thinking that God did not do it perfectly. And he was taking rest under a walnut tree. Just then when he was thinking about all these things, a walnut fell on his head. Then he looked up and thanked God, Lord, thank you that the watermelon is on the ground. So God knows what to keep and where to keep. So if you are planted somewhere, God knows that that is your right place and he has a perfect plan for you. So I'd like to talk about a particular person in the Bible, the story of Joseph. Joseph, I felt, was a perfect example of what we say, you are not in control, but the Lord is. Joseph was loved by his father more than his brothers. It was not his fault. Joseph liked all about 
God. It was not his fault. His brothers did not like him. It was not Joseph's fault. He was put in the prison. It was not his fault. Then he had the power to interpret dreams. It was a gift. And then he rose up to become the king. All these things that happened in Joseph's life, he was not in control. But God was in control. At the right time, he elevated Joseph to the highest pedestal. My friends, if you think that you are waiting for some breakthrough and you're praying about it and God has not answered it, don't feel that you are rejected or not bothered. Just be sure that God is working out a better plan for you. God knows what you want before you know that you need it. Because the Bible says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Isaiah 55 verse 8. So we need to wait on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is very, very important. We may have a lot of programs. We may have a lot of things that should happen in a particular time. We might have a timetable according to which things have to go. But it may not always because God knows when to give you and what to give you. So his timing is perfect. All we have to do is just wait on the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 verse 31, But those who wait on the Lord will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So let's take this example of Joseph. So when he was in the prison, there was the cupbearer and he interpreted the dream of the cupbearer. And the Bible says, the cupbearer forgot about Joseph. So after two years, when the Pharaoh had a dream and there was no one to interpret the dream, the cupbearer thought about Joseph. If Joseph was released from the prison on the very next day the cupbearer was released, then it would have been an ordinary endeavor. But after two years, when the Pharaoh had a problem, when he wanted a person to interpret his dream, the cupbearer remembered Joseph. So that was the perfect timing that God plans for your life. So you may think that God has forgotten you, but be assured, God knows when to give and what to give and how to give. You have to be silent and be in His presence. Waiting on the Lord does not mean that you have to sit idle waiting for the time to come. No. It is that you have to give in yourself to God. You have to surrender yourself. Make yourself available for God to mold you, to shape you, to make you better and make you equipped for his bigger purpose. So friends, this morning I want to encourage you that you need to wait on the Lord and be prepared for his bigger purpose in, in your life. So even in the, in the story of Abraham, when he was asked to sacrifice his son, Isaac, uh, took the son also, and when he was about to slay him, God intervened at the perfect time. So whatever the time that you're going through, a waiting period, it may not be fruitful, it may not be good for you, but remember, God has a plan for you. So we need to understand that God knows your problems, God knows what you want, and God knows when it has to be granted. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, You will not be tested beyond what you can bear, but during that time, you will know how to go over it. So that is our God, a faithful God. And he makes you wait in order to test your faith. 
and make you a better vessel for his kingdom. I want to encourage you this morning to wait on the Lord so that whatever you have in life, whatever plans that you have in life would prosper according to his will. I would tell my testimony, I had a perfect timetable. I should finish my PhD at this particular time. I should get a job at this particular time, get married, get settled, and everything was in a perfect timetable. But nothing happened as what I was planning. But if it had happened, I'm sure my life would not have been beautiful like what it is now. God knows when to give and what to give and how to give. So let us wait on the Lord. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand that you have a perfect plan and you know when to give, what to give and how to give for us. Lord, it is just very difficult for simple mortals like us to be patient in that waiting time. But Lord, help us to understand that you are preparing us. Help us to give ourselves to you. Help us to surrender ourselves to you so that you will be able to mold us, shape us, and make us a better person to deal with the mission that you have in store for us. Lord, this morning I come at each and every one of us who have listened to this message. Let it work in their hearts, Lord, and let it bear fruits. I pray especially for all the people of the college, the administrators, the professors, the students, the non-teaching staff, everyone into your control. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all praise. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.